True Sound Studios is in your ears. So I have gone ahead and started to disassemble the mixing console. As you can see, it's upright. And uh, I've removed one of the stereo channels so far. And I'm working on the mono channels right now. And this is actually a full mono channel. So this obviously doesn't have the modifications on it. And that is how many capacitors and what capacitors I need for one mono channel. So um, it's 21 capacitors per channel. So right now I think I'm up to about um, 850 capacitors to do this whole board. Um, not to mention the connections also have two capacitors per connection and then two additional right there and another one right there. So it's about 17 capacitors for eight connections for the mixing console. So just a ton. Um, but, which is kind of nice, the big 100 millimeter um, faders are Alps faders, so that's always nice. And you can see here, all the pots are all Alps pots, sealed uh, sealed switches, so, you know, some good quality for uh, an Allen and Heath board. So, if we go around to the back side of the console, you can see this is where all the madness is going to happen. So I know it's a little dark, but you can see all the channels. They're all connected um, with this huge ribbon cable that runs all the way through the entire mixing console. And you can see this is where I took out the stereo channel, which is right down here. Okay, getting a little further. Um, got uh, seven of the channels out. So this is the, the last channel in this bank of eight. And um, if you can see from the front, see all these big open slots. And uh, these channels are all just kind of held together with, you know, those hex hex nuts over the Alps pots. And after you take those out, the whole channel comes right up. Okay, so there you go. You got eight channels out of the mixing console so far. And uh, here are all eight mono channels. Um, so <laughs> I, uh, I did go ahead and label them all. You can see they're all labeled, uh, just so that I can kind of put them back into the same order. You know, I don't know if that actually matters, but so one of the big major things that I'm going to be doing is all these capacitors. Um, some of them have bulged, which means they're bad or going bad. And uh, it's really kind of affecting the mic preamps, and it probably has to do with the fact that I modified these. So, um, gonna order close to a thousand capacitors, and then um, go ahead and take out all the rest of the channels and the master section. Okay, so this is the master section, and um, minus this ribbon cable that connected up here, there's this master section. I don't know what it is. It's probably for the aux um, connections. I'm not really sure it's about where the auxes are, but so this whole thing comes out a little differently. I'm a little, a little scared of this one. Doesn't seem like it's, oh, it's screwed in. Hopefully this comes out nicely. Just two little screws. There we go. This is like a solid ribbon cable connector. I'm going to disconnect it here. It's gonna leave that alone for now, but there you go. There's all your master sections. Okay, so working on the master sections, we're gonna work on the groups first. Um, I took off my 3D printed custom dual fader. And then there's a couple screws here that hold it in. I just loosen those up and then we'll take out the fader caps. They just pull out like this. And then same thing for those faders. I'll just have some screws and then just a little trim pot. Take that off and now we'll pull some of the screws out. 
Okay, so um, obviously I've uh, been modifying the console, so I took out all 16 of these mono channels have came out. And this is the other eight channels. But if you see, ah, oops. Um, it doesn't fit because I had to move it over like an extra three inches. And I'm leaving this bank of eight channels out. And the reason I'm doing that is for a couple different reasons. Uh, I don't really track drums, live drums too much anymore. And that's like the real reason I had so many input channels to record onto from the console. And you know, things have been, uh, I still wanna do the analog summing for sure. Um, so I definitely, 20 channels or so are still going to run on that side, this side of the board. Um, but for input channels, I'm just going to keep 16. I'm leaving the space that I extended, like that extra three inches. And I'm going to put a um, Personas Fader Port 8. And it's going to fit inside of here. And uh, kind of make this mixing console like half, a majority analog, but also part digital. Um, so that I really realistically just have more control. If you guys remember from my other studio, I used to have a second monitor to my right hand side um, in front of the console. Now I'm gonna have it, it's gonna be right in the middle of the console, right up here, instead of being up front and off to the side. So, you know, just trying to add some more of that digitalness into this analog workflow. So this is what the console looks like right now though. So we got, they'll have 16 channels there. Right here will be the Personas Fader Port 8. Still have the entire master section. And then these will be, it's 16 channels, but it's actually 20 inputs for the analog summing. So because I had to extend this uh, mixing console, it's actually three and a quarter inches I extended. Um, I pushed this whole end plate out and I put these four inch bolts in between with the spacers. And what this allowed me to do is get that little bit of extra room so that I could put the fader port um, in, pretty much in the mix of the middle of the console. And um, it doesn't look pretty right now, but what is gonna happen is, you know, I've already gone through this. The whole armrest is about eight inches that goes up. So it actually covers this whole thing so you won't see this gap. And then down here at the bottom, you won't see this just because you, this is obviously behind the mixing console. The meter bridge will cover up this little gap. The only hole that you actually see from the backside, which I'm gonna cover up with something, will be this three and a quarter inch gap, um, which is actually where the uh, Persona's USB fader port, um, the USB connection, and also the power supply will run through here. Um, obviously, it's a really big gap. Um, and then also these connections are obviously no good because um, these eight channels are gone, but it's okay. I'll, I'll probably get a custom piece of metal just to cut this, uh, to cover it, and then just drill maybe a one inch hole to run the other cables through it. And uh, that will complete the digital modifications to this analog mixing console. So before I can actually get into recapping pretty much every channel. Um, you gotta go ahead and pull off each one of these caps, which is, some of them are really stuck on there. You gotta pull these off and then take off all of these nuts that are on all the Alps faders. Then there's three screws per channel that holds the big master fader. And then finally these little buttons in and uh, pull out the rest of these 16 channels and for the most part, I will be ready to order like a thousand capacitors and uh, you know fix the electronics in here and just bring this console up to the 21st century. Okay, so now that all of the pot caps are off of everything, <laughs> um, there's a couple bags of these. So if I, I did the math and it's just over 900 of these um, caps that I had to take off of every single channel. So not over 900. So it's uh, it also means there's 900 of these threaded nuts that go over each one of the pots also that have to be taken off. 
and put back on. So this is why people charge a lot of money to recap a console. And for me, I wanted to do so many modifications and I already had modified it that I wanted to do it myself. Anyways, it's a lot of work. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna show you guys how I take off just one channel. Um, this does happen to be a stereo channel, so it is slightly different. I'm just using a, an extended um, driver just to be able to get into there and pull these off. So you obviously got to do them one at a time. And because these are Alps um, pots or potentiometers is what they're also not, uh, actually called, but pots for short, um, they're all steel. Um, or like a pressed metal. So it is metal to metal. So at least you know that they're of good quality. Um, I have seen some plastic ones. Not saying that plastic is necessarily bad. But... So after you get all these off, you'll see that this whole channel now is essentially free, but there's just three screws up here. Uh, looks like I already took out one there. So there's two screws for the actual, um, the big fader, this big 100 millimeter fader. And then there's just one last screw right here. And you'll watch, this whole thing is gonna kind of break free. See it really moving around now. And then from the back, there's a, a ground wire. And you can see it's all soldered on, but they leave you this, this extension. And what I actually, I don't know any other way to do it, but cut it. And then when I'm done with these, I'll just fold them like this and then re-solder them back together. But that is the, it looks to be the ground. And then this whole channel, but there you go. That is a full, uh, full channel coming right out of this board. Okay guys, so um, that is it for this video. I gotta finish pulling all these channels out of here um, so that I can order the more than a thousand uh, capacitors to recap this entire console. So I'm gonna get to work on that. Um, right now I'm actually in my parents' basement. Uh, it's the only like clean space uh, to work on this, this mixing console right now. But uh, soon I'll, I'll get all the caps all the capacitors in and uh, I'll be able to show you guys at least one channel how to recap a channel on a mixing console. I was actually looking at the manufacturer dates on these uh, channels and they were actually manufactured in 1997. So that means it is essentially 20 years old plus. So just a little over than 20 years. So it's definitely time to uh, get these old capacitors out of here and put some new um, new capacitors that are just are going to be more efficient, they're going to be better, and they're going to bring this whole mixing console quality up even more. Alright guys, so as always, thank you very much for watching. Um, don't forget to check out the over 160 other videos right here on the True Sound Studios YouTube channel. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.